Hey everyone, this is Gray Man, and I've come back to do another voice video to try and talk about the unusual news we received about the series recently, and that is the announcement of Yakuza Kiwami for the Nintendo Switch. Which, yeah, didn't expect that at all. I, did, I didn't even watch the presentation. I didn't find this out until a little bit later. And just, I actually first saw that they announced the the collection for the Castlevania DS games, which I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. But then I sort of, and I've actually found the trailer on the Nintendo channel, then I found Kiwami 1 on Switch, I'm like, what the heck? I mean, that's kind of unusual. I mean, it's been seven years, and now we finally get one Yakuza game on Switch. But yeah, that's sort of the thing is, seven years into the Switch, and only now do we get one title of the Yakuza series on the Switch. So it does make you wonder, why now? So, I think it's just interesting, because I think perhaps they want to get the series into the minds of, like, Nintendo consumers in this time. Because the successor to the Switch, Switch 2, Switch Pro, whatever they, they're going to call it, or <laughs> may not even be called Switch, whatever. But they may just be trying to get the series out to that audience in preparation for if they're putting games onto, or just putting more games onto the Switch or the successor of the Switch. But it's actually interesting that Toshiro Nogoshi who of course is no longer with Sega, actually appeared at this like conference and sort of presentation where Nintendo sort of announced stuff with the Nintendo Switch. Although I think that was more so he was representing Sega rather than the series because he used to be the chief creative officer. But of course he's no longer in that position and he left Sega and started his own company. So it's interesting that of that it's just, it's, hasn't, it's just been all this time and that they never released one game in the series on the Switch till now. It, it does make you wonder if like, they're just doing this now because they just wanted to get at least one on the console. Or maybe it just, they had a problem. You know, I think maybe they'd always like sort of toyed with it. Maybe they'd been testing stuff to see if they could get a game running one of the games running on the Switch, and maybe maybe it just took them a while, or just the priority wasn't as like big, because I mean, porting one of the older games, I mean, they already sort of released the games on like other sort of big platforms, especially with the PC releases. But I would've, but you definitely would've seen more priority on newer games and just the older game re-releases every now and then. But it's interesting that they didn't they decided not to tap into this market until now. Yeah, I don't know, it's just interesting. Yeah, sorry, this is a bit of a rambly video, not very like super scripted. Sorry about that. But yeah, it's just interesting because it makes you wonder what what will they do next? And this will also go into another thing I'll talk about, but yeah, what are, will they do next? They could yeah, it's also they choose Kiwami one first? I'll get into this a bit. It just makes me wonder what else they're going to put on there. It does remind me of that uh, sort of like mock-up meme I made that I posted on like my channel posts where I sort of took the Japanese covers of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 and put them into this like blank switch format. And I don't know, you can find it on my channel posts. I actually went and updated and said like, well, this joke is sort of mostly aged poorly or sort of aged well, depends on what you think. But it's mostly correct because I mean, it's not like the original Yakuza 1 is going to be on the Switch. <sighs> we're never, we're probably never going to get those original two released again. That's sad. But yeah, it makes me wonder just what else are they going to try and release? I mean, imagine them trying to get one of the Dragon Engine games running. Holy crap. Ooh, that's going to be interesting. I mean, they're, they're going to have to downgrade it or it's going to run like... Oh, no. <laughs> I guess just sort of the 
performance. It'll be interesting to sort of compare this this version to the PS3 version because then Kiwami actually came out on the PS3 in Japan in, on PS3 and PS4. But when it came out in English, they only did the PS4 version. They actually put console exclusive game, which that's that hasn't aged well with the PC and Xbox versions. <laughs> but yeah, it'd be interesting to see. It, since it's obviously not going to run like the PC version, which most people probably migrated to. I don't. <laughs> I didn't. Because I'm, uh, well, whatever. <laughs> It'll just be interesting to sort of look at it, maybe just compare it to the old PS3 version. <laughs> interesting to get eight years, di eight years gap between those two releases. But it'll just be interesting. I might just look into that. Maybe also look into the... PS3 version of Zero, and I thought about doing like sort of a fun little like stream for the 10th anniversary of Zero, where I just play the PS3 version. It'd just be fun. <laughs> but speaking of which, it's interesting that they choose Kiwami One over Zero. I just think that's really interesting since they sort of did try to like mentally prepare people playing on PC as experiencing the chronological order since they started with Zero and Kiwami but yeah they sort of like promoted Zero as like oh this is where you're gonna start this is where the stories begin I get that but I'm I'm definitely sort of like the I kind of like starting at the true beginning which is Yakuza 1 and then sort of going back after going through most things sort of see a new context into like before but that's just a whole other can of worms but it's interesting that they sort of want to prepare the nintendo fan base or like n potential nintendo fan base with this game since it is like a remake of the very first story of course with added stuff because of zero like the all the nishiki segments but it's interesting that they chose that, so maybe they're trying to go into a pseudo new take on the, I don't know, original order. I don't know, maybe. We'll see in the future. But of course, the, one of the biggest things to talk about is that Yakuza on a Nintendo console. Well, not the first time we've seen that, because if you remember, or maybe if you didn't know, 11 years ago in 2013, they actually released the Yakuza 1 and 2 HD collection on the Wii U, only in Japan, unfortunately. Similar to the already out PS3 version of that game, again, only in Japan. Which, man, that really stinks, because that is like an amazing way to play those two. And I know some people will probably be emulating either the PS2 or even the PS3 version, but... I just really like that PS3 version because one thing over playing on the PS2 is that you can use the phones to get the item box, which is surprisingly spoiling. <laughs> it's kind of weird to go back to the original sort of system where you actually had to go into the item box, which I definitely kind of also enjoy that because it kind of get, makes you think about, okay, I need to go out of my way and go check my items and all that, but whatever. Yeah, this is the second time they've attempted to mar to get into the Nintendo uh, market. <laughs> so this will probably be a lot better than what they how they went with the HD version on the Wii U. Because I mean, I actually had I I used to have the Wii U version and a Japanese Wii U, but I no longer do. I just I just didn't have. I just sort of hadn't been using it much and it just took up so much space that I just said, uh, I don't really need this anymore, to be honest. I, always did, I did try to make content like before, or at least tried to, especially on like my older, like one of my previous attempts at a channel that it just didn't work out. I guess one last thing that's interesting is that they're, they're the logo is actually very is different than the logo they used before. It's like the Yakuza name is just a different color, and they don't have like the red like incomplete circle 
which is interesting because they've been using that since the first game practically. Although for us in the English version, we didn't really have that until zero. Yeah, but it's interesting that even for this, they're not using that. And they sort of did sort of retire that with seven. Because even if you look at the Ryuga Gotoku 7 logo, it doesn't have the half circle. Not half circle, the incomplete circle logo. Oh, it's just interesting that they're sort of adopting a new style. And it's interesting, again, that they're actually still using the Yakuza name for this. But I guess it makes sense, because that game to English, like anyone out, outside of Japan and other, other places like Korea or China, they, uh, we, of course, we use the Yakuza, we use the Yakuza name for those games, so it's interesting that they're bringing it back for these games. So I'm guessing it'll still be Yakuza for, like, other ones. And then they'll, then, of course, when the Like a Dragon shift happens, that's what's going to happen. So there's just a lot of interesting things that are potentially happening in the future. And I'll be interested to see what happens next, so that's all for now. Take care.